your TV set doesn't need fine-tuning. It's Chipmunk Punk, the smash album of the year. Simon, Theodore, and Alvin bring you their fantastic versions of today's top hits. Just listen. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. My name is Jazzy, and I have returned from my six, seven months, depending on when this video goes up, long hiatus. And that was just because I had school and personal things. It was, uh, it was a mess. <laughs> And just like my closet tour, I will be filming on different days, so don't be alarmed when I suddenly change outfits and don't even acknowledge it. The video for today, I'm going to be showing my record collection. Oh god, so I forgot this thing was here. To add some context, I have been collecting records for nearly four years now. And of course, a big fat chunk of it is 80s music. Nowadays, I don't collect as many records as I did in my first two years, but if I ever happen to find something interesting at the thrift store, I usually get it. And if there's an album I happen to really, really love, then I go online to buy it. A very small percentage of my 80s records are thrifted. I don't really come across that many. And then all the other records that aren't 80s music, I mainly thrifted. For this video, I'm mainly going to cut it up in different chapters. So if you want to skip ahead past these much older records and go on to mainly the 80s records, be my guest. I won't judge you. However, if you want to stick around and watch this video in its entirety, I will appreciate that. With the intro done, just sit back and relax and enjoy the video. I decided to kind of go in a chronological order with these records. I have a mix of all kinds of music from different decades, so it only seems reasonable to start them in that order. To be honest, I have no idea how to format this video. I've been trying to decide what I really want. Some record collection videos have people talking about like their favorite songs and their least favorite songs, and then other videos have people sort of showing you the record and not talking and just playing some music over it. So I decided to just go with talking over part. If you guys like me talking, Talking. That's great, but if you don't, I am so sorry. This is just the choice I've made. Now this record obviously isn't from the 20s, but it does have 20s music. It is called The Roaring 20s, Bunny Maddox and his old time Charleston band. Same thing with this one, it's not from the 40s, but it does have 40s music. Now we are moving on to the 50s. Now this one, I believe, wasn't pressed in the 50s, but it is full of 50s music. It is called The Happy Days of Rock and Roll. And here we have Santo and Johnny. At the time, I was looking everywhere for a very good copy of this record, because I love Santo and Johnny, especially their song Sleepwalk. It is just amazing. Moving on, we are heading to the 60s. I have a few 45s from that decade, so I'll start with those first. Here we have Elvis Presley's Can't Help Falling in Love, The Righteous Brothers' Unchained Melody, and of course my personal favorite Little Green Bag by George Baker Selection. It is featured in my favorite movie Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. And I just can't get enough of this song. I can listen to it on loop forever. So now we are heading to the uh, scary looking record albums. As creepy as this cover look, Fiddler on the Roof is actually one of my favorite musicals, so I am very happy to have this. And for our next creepy cover album is the Beatles album Revolver. And yes, I'm gonna act like a grandpa or your dad because I too think that the Beatles Abbey Road album is a masterpiece. And this is the last record for the 60s section. It is just the compilation music of the Beatles from 1967 to 1970. Naturally, moving on to the 70s, I also have a few 45s from that decade. This one you might remember from my thrift haul video from a long, long time ago. It is the funky 70s rendition of the Star Wars theme slash cantina band. And here we have Pink Floyd's Money from the album The Dark Side of the Moon. And we have Donna Summer on the radio. The album was made in the 70s, but it mainly has 50s and 60s rock and roll music. It is a soundtrack to the 1973 movie American Graffiti. It is one of my all-time favorite movies. I am very unapologetic about it. And no, I did not write an entire film paper about this movie and script an entire podcast project episode for my college class too. What do you mean? 
Next up is the Moody Blues compilation album. This is the Moody Blues. And this one I thrifted in a very uh, rift sleeve. This is the Rio Speedwagon album. You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. The first Star Trek movie, the motion picture record is one of my favorites. The soundtrack is so good. And I love the inside sleeve as well. It has really great pictures. I have a few Melissa Manchester records. This one is her self-titled album, Melissa Manchester. And I also have the album, Don't Cry Out Loud. And now what you've all been waiting for or skip to are my 80s records. To mention one more time that thrift haul video from a very long time ago, I thrifted a ton of 45 records full of just 80s music. First one up is Shakedown by Frankie and the Knockouts. Now Frankie and the Knockouts is a pretty underrated band in my opinion. They have really great music and I have one of their other records that I'll be showing you later. Sorry, I was pointing because it's on my wall. <laughs> Next, we have the theme song from Karate Kid 2, Glory of Love by Peter Cetera, Let's Dance by David Bowie, All Night Long by Lionel Richie, Duran Duran, Hungry Like the Wolf, Foreigners Waiting for a Girl Like You, Cool It Down by New Edition. I absolutely adore New Edition. And I do have their first record, which I'll show you later. And I also have Mr. Telephone Man on 45. I have two Holland Oats 45, and the first one is I Can't Go For That, and the second one is Man Eater. Flash Dance, What a Feeling by Irene Cara, Eddie Murphy's Party All the Time, Rosanna by Toto, Red Red Wine by UB40, Don't Stand So Close To Me by The Police, Break My Stride by Matthew Wilder, The Look of Love by ABC. Always wanted their record, The Lexicon of Love. It is a very good album if you have not listened to it. Do You Really Want to Hurt Me by Culture Club, Rick Springfield's Don't Talk to Strangers, David Lee Roth's Just the Gigolo, and I have three Rod Stewart 45s. First one is Do You Think I'm Sexy, Lost in You, and Love Touch. Lost in Your Eyes by Debbie Gibson. It's kind of a crime that I don't have any Debbie Gibson records. I do have her album Out of the Blue on cassette. I should really get on that someday. And oh my god. <laughs> Falling in Love by Miami Sound Machine. Next is Rick Astley. <laughs> Sorry, that's the last time I'm doing that. And this one's called She Wants to Dance With Me. I do have his two 80s albums and I'll be showing that to you later. They are my prized possession. They are my pride and joy. They are my children. The Girl Is Mine by Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney. Also a crime that I don't have any Michael Jackson albums. It is required for an 80s fan to have at least one Michael Jackson album. Phil Collins, Susudio. This is Susudio. A great, great song. Personal favorite. Janet Jackson's When I Think of You. I don't have her records either, but I do have the record that this song was on, which is the album Control. I do have it on cassette. I have two Starship 45s. The first one is It's Not Over Till It's Over, and the other one is Sarah. I actually didn't know this when I did the thrift haul video, but the record of Sarah is, uh, is blue. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh, and I forgot to add Be My Lady by Jefferson Starship. So Emotional by Whitney Houston. Don't Rush Me by Taylor Dane. Let's Hear It For The Boys by Denise William from the Footloose soundtrack. Open Your Heart by Madonna. The Lover In Me by Sheena Easton. Could Have Been by Tiffany. When The Going Gets Tough, The Tough Gets Going by Billy Ocean. And if you know, I love Romancing the Stone, but what I don't love is the sequel, which sadly this amazing song is on. All right, all right, but if we get out of this alive, I'm gonna kill you. Let's go, come it's, it's just a shame, that's all I have to say. Also, I really need some Billy Ocean records because his music is so good. Go listen to it, please. And of course, my love, my life, the light of my life, Kylie Minogue. And this is her song, I Should Be So Lucky. I do have her debut album that this song is from. It slaps so hard, it is one of my favorite 80s albums and if you haven't listened to it, please go listen to it. I know she's still a relevant artist nowadays, but her 80s music is so good and needs way more recognition. And the last 45 before we move on to the regular records is Strawberry Switchblade's Apple of My Eye. This one is the Japanese pressing. This song wasn't released anywhere else but in Japan. <laughs> Japan loved these girls, so I'm not surprised that there was only just an exclusive pressing there. And their style? Iconic! Yeah, so I'm Rose from Strawberry Switchblade. And I'm Jill. Hello. And we really, I'm really glad to be in Japan. Sorry, I just came back. I was gonna show you the Strawberry Switchblade record, but this just came in the mail and I've been waiting for this. Oh my god, did this become an unboxing video? <laughs> It is Perspective by America. This album has no skip songs. To me, to me, of course, but no 
skip. It's so sad that they popped off on this album in the 80s until they came back in the 90s. They should have made more. Here's the record I was gonna start with. This is Strawberry Switchblade's self-titled album. It says it was printed in Japan, and I actually got this from the UK, so I did have it shipped out um, internationally. At the time that I got this record, it was the most expensive one that I had in my collection. Until... Yes, it is he, Mr. Mr. Astley. Astley. These two albums and his first one, especially, were so expensive. Aside from his obvious popular hits, he has some great music. Please go check out these two albums if you haven't yet in its entirety. They have the best catchiest music, I promise you. Here we have two DeBarge records. They are obviously two different musical acts, so I'll go ahead and show you L DeBarge first. He was primarily the lead singer of DeBarge, and as a solo artist, he released the song Who's Johnny and Love Always. And who's Johnny was his debut solo single in the movie Short Circuit. And that's where I ended up finding out who he is and going down the DeBarge rabbit hole. I wish I had more DeBarge records, but this is the only one I have, and it is The Rhythm of the Night. Next is such a strange divergent, but it is Chipmunk Punk. Can you believe this was actually certified gold? I'm not joking, it's on the Wikipedia. Chipmunk Punk, over a million copies of this tremendous collection have already been sold. And continuing with the chipmunks is the Chipmunk Adventure soundtrack. Now, I had no idea that this existed and when I found out that it did, it was so hard to find a copy that wasn't expensive. I don't know how many of these that they released. I didn't do too much research on it. They seem to be pretty rare and listed at very high prices. I do actually have the Chipmunk Adventure 2008 DVD re-release with the included soundtrack on CD, so there's that trivia for you. Here we have one of my favorite artists, Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA record. I wish I had more of his records because his music is just so good. Here's Melissa Manchester again with Hey Ricky. I'm hoping in the future I get more of her albums, especially for The Working Girl in Emergency because dang, al those albums, so good. And here we have a 12 inch remix record of Only My Dreams by Debbie Gibson. I especially love the drawings on this cover. They are absolutely fabulous. Next is Altered Images album, Happy Birthday. I love this album so much and of course the song Happy Birthday was in the John Hughes movie 16 Candles. Speaking of John Hughes, I have the Pretty in Pink soundtrack. When I say this soundtrack and movie changed me as a teenager, I mean it. And for another soundtrack is the Dirty Dancing soundtrack. Here's Real Speedwagon's album, High Infidelity. Also, can we talk about the back? It's just so funky looking. I love everything about it. Hey, different day, different outfit. Next one up, I got from Mexico, obviously, because it is Flans. Flans is a great band. If you have not heard any of their albums from the 80s, please do so right now. The first album is my absolute favorite, obviously. It has really great pop songs in it. And as you guys might know, and constantly keep reminding me for some reason, is my opening theme song. That's why I chose it for my opening song. I know the song. That's why I chose it. I'm really surprised I haven't gotten copyrighted for that yet, yet. Next one I have is Truth in Disguise by Denise Lopez. Oh my gosh, now I absolutely love Julie Brown. If you don't know anything about Julie Brown, uh, go ahead, look her up. She's great. He just said Julie. That's me. Ba, 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 yeah. I have her album, Trapped in the Body of a White Girl. When I say go check out an album, I truly mean it. This is definitely going to be one of them because there is no skips. Truly, I have not come across another unique album than this one. And here it is, New Edition self-titled album. I searched high and low for this record that was in really good condition and I happened upon this one on Etsy and it was still in its shrink wrap. It's one of my favorites and pretty much anything that they made in the 80s is very good. This one's a pretty odd one. Not a lot of people know about this, but this is totally mini. <laughs> Hello, voiceover editing Jazzy here. I forgot to mention a few things about this record. Totally Mini actually took off as a TV anime special that debuted on NBC in 1988. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. However, 
However, this record came out before the special. This was released in 1986. It has a mix of original songs and some covers. There isn't actually a lot of information about this record online aside from a very small Wikipedia page. So if you happen to know anything about this, I would love to hear. And this album has so many good songs, like super good songs. And if I remember, I think the reason how I found out about this record specifically was because of Disneyland's After Dark 80s Night from 2020, where Total Mini came back for an appearance. Now this next one is very special to me because I absolutely adore CC Catch, and this is the only record that I have from her, and it was imported from Germany. I really wish that I could have more of her albums, but they go for a lot of money online. So instead, I thought to opt out for a compilation album. She's one of my top favorite artists, and I listened to her music for about a year straight, I think. All of her music is just so cool. Now this is the SOS band's record, Sands of Time. And this band is definitely a part of my underrated band group because no one talks about them that much, and they're amazing. Their sound is just amazingly 80s, so great. And like I said I would show, here's Frankie and the Knockouts album, Below the Belt. As I said before, also another underrated band that people don't appreciate enough. This is definitely one of my favorite albums for them, and this cover art, just look at it. It is so fantastic. Now these next few records I thrifted while going on a short vacation a few weeks back, and I picked up Latin Rascals. I've actually never heard of them before, but I really liked the cover, and someone ended up putting like a really funny sticker quote on here. <laughs> And I checked them out on Spotify, and they're pretty good. Next one up that I also thrifted is Vanessa Williams' 12-inch record of her single, The Right Stuff. And the last record that I thrifted on that trip is The Crash. This is their 12-inch record of their single, Wasn't I Good To You. I freaking love Quarter Flash. And their album, Back Into Blue, is one of my favorites. But if you haven't checked them out before, please go and do that. Now, this is the artist Atanas, and the album is called Shadows. And it turns out the killer from Slumber Party Massacre 2. And in there, he basically played like a musical killer, Elvis Presley, rock and roll guy. Tell me what you waiting for. <laughs> You can find a few of his songs on YouTube right now, but not the entire album. And I ended up finding one on Amazon and it was unopened. So I was like, okay, this is awesome. This is my chance. Can't wait to have this. I mean, the album's pretty good. His voice is pretty good. Nothing to complain about. Now this record I ended up thrifting early on in my collection. I was really surprised it was at a thrift store. I kind of freaked out when I saw it. Next record is Cliff Richard's album, I'm No Hero. Next ones, I have two Olivia Newton-John records. I thrifted both of these. The first one is Olivia's record and most popular single, Physical. And then the second one is The Greatest Hits Volume 2. Now, I thrifted this record not knowing who Al Jarreau was, but I could tell from the cover that it was 80s and I had to know what the music was like, so I looked it up on the spot on YouTube and ended up loving it and this is honestly one of my favorite records it has such good songs on it and he's so amazingly talented I love his sound and his voice and everything I was so excited to thrift both of these Lionel Richie record albums because they're both my favorites this one is Lionel Richie's first studio album and his album can't slow down and we are almost until the end I have a few more to show you I have all of <laughs> Miami Sound Machine's records from the 80s, of course. They are one of my favorite bands, and Gloria Estefan is an icon. <laughs> you have no idea how many times I've listened to Primitive Love and Eyes of Innocence. Those two albums are my absolute favorite. Let It Loose is also very fantastic, but like I said, I have those other favorites. And the final records that I'm going to be showing you last, I did on purpose because, like I said, Kali Mino is my favorite. Actually, I'm getting these two in a bundle, so that's why I have them both. And this one is the 12-inch record of her single, I Should Be So Lucky. And of course, the next one is one of her most popular singles, The Locomotion. Funny story, uh, this is actually the second attempt to get this album from the UK. It got lost in the mail and never came to me, which is sad. Then a year later, I attempted to get it again, and she made it. And I am so happy to have this album because it is my favorite. She means so much to me just because I was obsessed with her music for the longest time. And if anybody gives those wonderful 80s pop music sound, 
catchy beat, makes you immediately happy when you listen to it, it is definitely Kylie Minogue's music. Editing Jazzy here one more time, I bought a record from Mexico and it arrived after filming, but here it is! It's Lucero, also known as Lucerito, the Times' fifth album, Ocho Quince. I've become very obsessed with her music recently, and I love her voice, sound, and look. Overall, she's just really cool. Now that's it for the 80s records. I have some to show you that are more recent modern records. I don't know. I'll explain later. Anyway, this one I do have. It is from 1990, but I consider that year to be prior music, late 80s produced and recorded music. And this is Pablo Ruiz's album Espejos Azules. I thrifted this record and had no idea who he was. I love this record a lot. I think it is really good, but it's not one of my favorites. This 1990s album is good, but I much prefer his album Un Angel a little bit more. Now I do have records from modern artists, but I'll show you those last. The first ones that I want to show you is this one, Smash Hit the 80s. Now I wasn't sure if I wanted to add this compilation record to my 80s record section. Um, I decided not to just because it's a modern pressing. Nothing against all of the 80s music, I just felt more comfortable putting this record in this category. Same thing goes for Queen's Greatest Hits. And of course, it's another compilation album that I decided to put in this section. If you've noticed, I do have a Queen poster, but I don't have any Queen records. I was this close to buying News of the World a couple months ago when I was at the mall, but at the time I was a little bit broke, so I decided not to. Since I got past those, here are the records from modern artists that I like. I'm a huge, huge Childish Gambino fan. I cannot say that enough. I don't know how to express it enough without, you know, fangirling. Now this one is one of his most popular albums. It is because of the internet, because this whole album feels like its own little world all in and of itself. He did actually write a screenplay for this album and he did release a sort of trailer short oh my god see here i go i'm i'm gonna consistently talk about it if i don't stop right now now this next one is awaken my love this is also another really great album at the time i consider this his most underrated album and that was before 31520 came out and now i think 31520 is the most underrated album now the very last record of my entire collection i recently got not even a month ago and it is the repressing of horror show by The Midnight. And if you don't know who The Midnight is, please stop this video right now and go listen to their music. I'm giving you permission to stop watching my own video just to go listen to The Midnight. And yes, this confirms that I'm a huge, huge synthwave music fan and The Midnight is one of my all-time favorites. I love them so much. All of their albums are amazing, but Horror Show just had a chokehold on me. I, you, I, I can't explain. I think it's because it came around the peak of my horror 80s obsession. <laughs> I was so happy to hear that they were repressing this because I was going crazy not having a record of the Midnight or any of the Midnight albums. And if I had to choose which one I wanted, it definitely would have been this one. Now, I did promise to show my cassettes. I don't have a lot of them. I just actually showed a few of them earlier in the video, but I have a couple more. I pretty much thrifted all of these, but here is the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band cassette. And I guess I do have one Michael Jackson music media in my collection, and it is Heal the World cassette. And the last two cassettes are Yanni, the Out of Silence album, and Optimistique. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. And if you are new here and you love all things 80s and like my content, please don't hesitate to subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell so you can be notified of all of my future videos now that I am back from my little hiatus. And comment what was your favorite record out of all of my collections or what's your favorite 80s artist? I would love to hear. Hope you all have a good week and remember to take care of yourselves. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! Introducing Pocket Rockers, Tiny Tapes, Tiny Players. Down on the corner, out in the street, Pocket Rockers are playing where the music feels the beat. Pocket Rockers, play them here, wear them anywhere. Down on the corner, out in the street, Pocket Rockers are playing where the music feels the beat. Tiny Players, Tiny Tapes, Pocket Rockers, tapes and accessories sold separately, batteries not included, from Fisher Price.